Okay, I am guilty of this. If I order a glass of wine, I always get the same thing. So why not try an Italian wine? It's one of the oldest wine cultures in the world, and there's a lot of value to be had in a bottle of Italian wine. I learned that and so much more from Conrad Hunter, the owner of Foxcroft Wine Company. Conrad, we could literally spend hours talking about Italian wine. You're going to break it down into some of the better known regions. Right, right. It would take hours to do that. But these are some iconic areas of Italian wine. I'd like to touch on the icons and then show you a nice value-oriented alternative. The first region we have here is from Piedmont. And of course, the most famous wine of Piedmont is Barolo. Barolo was considered the king of wines and the wine of kings forever. It's made from the Nebbiola grape, which is very similar and characteristic to like a good burgundy. Okay. Um, Barbaresco and Barolo average, you know, they started in the $50 and go up over the $100 range, you know, on average. But just to the south of Barolo and Barbaresco, which is an Appalachian controlled wine and hence more expensive, you get into the area of the Lange. And um, there they grow the same grape, Nebbiola, and it's about a third the price. All right, what's the next region you want to focus on? Well, this is the Veneto. This is in the northeast corner of Italy. Um, you probably know the cities of Venice and Verona. It's right in, outside of Verona, in between Venice and Verona. Uh, the most famous wine from there being Amarone. Um, we consider this the gateway wine for a lot of uh, uh, California cab drinkers because it's got the richness and the bright, full-bodied flavor that a lot of people that drink California wine are looking for. As an alternative to Amarone, the Rapasso is a great value. It's, it's um, wine that's made in the same method as Valpicello. All these are made in the same from the same three grapes. And that's this one right and here. That's this one. Should we, we try it? Oh, we sure, absolutely, we should. Cheers. Yeah, cheers. <laughs> Sounds good. See the smooth, velvety oh, kind of ripeness. Yeah. The difference Ooh, to Amarone would like be a that. lot, lot heavier, and you know, by comparison, it's about a third the price. Oh. I think it's safe to assume everyone's heard of Chianti, and this is the real deal here at Foxcroft Wine Company. Correct. This is not the straw basket Chianti of your fathers and mothers. Uh, nights out together. Right. The main grape in Chianti, it's a blend, but the main grape is Sangiovese. That's probably the, the most famous grape in all of Italy, Sangiovese. If you drive just a little further south from Siena, you'll come to the hillside town of Montalcino. It's a medieval fortress town. There's a grape that grows there, which is a strain of Sangiovese called Sangiovese Grosso, and they, they call it Brunello. It's the most probably iconic of all Italian wines today. Supply and demand has a little bit to do with why the wine is so expensive, but it also has a lot of rules governing Brunello and its production. It spends a minimum of two years in oak, and it has to be held back a minimum of four years before you can release it. So, so you've got an alternative As, as an alternative, the, the folks in Montalcino, the wine growers and wine makers, produce Rosso de Montalcino. It's made from the same grapes, but usually the second or third pass through the vineyard, and it doesn't have to spend the time in oak. That, Brunello does. And not to leave out my friends over in the town of Montepulciano, um, they produce the very same grape. They call it Prugnole Gentile instead of Brunello, but it's still Sangiovese. Um, these guys were rival towns for during the Renaissance between each other. One was under Florence, one was under Siena, and they still don't like each other. Well, you know what I like? This wine right here, and I love Foxcroft Wine Company. Thank you so much. You're welcome. I, I really do. Every time I go there, I spend money. It's a problem. <laughs> Foxcroft Wine Company has two locations in Charlotte. They're gorgeous. There's one on Fairview Road. The other is on East Boulevard in Dilworth. Go to either one. Let them help you with an Italian wine. They are great. They're very, um, they, they really make it comfortable for you to sort of get out of your box, if you will. Also, the Dilworth location will begin opening every Sunday from 1 wow. to 9. Starting this Sunday, they will be showing the Panthers game. Yes. So go drink some wine, watch the Panthers. Don't forget to pick up a top-selling varietal or party pack. It includes two bottles each of Chardonnay, Rosé, and Malbec for $65. And you get this handy-dandy tote oh, I like that. that you can store all your wine in, okay. which I've been, I've been embracing. <laughs> I was like, oh, I love it so much. <laughs> but you can go there. Go to Foxcroft Wine Company, a great, great place. Thanks wow. to Conrad and everybody over there for their help with that story. Well,